Hello, my name is Tanya McIntosh. I am a piano teacher at Vincent Music, and today we'll be discussing chords, seventh chords, and dominant and diminished arpeggios. So first, we'll look at the tonic triad. So what example we're going to use is the C major key, the C major scale. So in the tonic triad, it contains the first three notes: the tonic, third, and fifth note. So, for example, if we look at the C major key, the tonic triad will be C, E, and G. Because if we count, the first note being is C. We count from C, D, two, three, E, and again count from there. F four, and G five, and then we have the tonic triad of the C major key. And this can be applied to any other scales. It can be applied to D major, E major, F major. The tonic triad of F major will be F. Count from F, G second note, and then third note will be A. Count from there. Fourth note will be B flat. The fifth note will then be C. And the tonic triad of F major key will be F, A, and C. Tonic triads are as simple as that. Then we'll move on to the C major seventh chord. So the seventh chord is pretty simple. Basically, you just have the tonic triad. So, for example, C major key again. Well, the tonic triad of that key will be C, E, and G. And then we just have to add the seventh note to make it. A seventh chord. So then that will be, if we count from C to figure out the seventh note, C is one, D is two, E is three, F is four, G is five, A is six, and then the seventh note will be B. So then that B note would then be added to the tonic triad. And there you have is a C major seventh chord, C, E, G, M, B. This can also be applied to minor keys. So if we have a look at a minor, for example, the tonic triad of A minor would be A, C, and E, following the process of just counting upwards, A. Second note is B, third note is C, and counting there again, you got fourth note is D, and then the fifth note is E, and then you have the tonic triad of A minor, and then we add in the seventh note of A minor. Count from A, A one, B two, C three, D four. E five, F six, and then the seventh note will be G. So then the seventh chord of A minor would then be A, C, E, and G. Simple as that. Then we move on to dominant seventh chords. Now the dominant seventh chord. What happens simply is that that seventh note goes a step down, becomes flattened. So then, if let's say we go back to our C major key, we would have C, E, and G. The tonic triad again. Add in our seventh note, which is B. But then we add a flat to B, and that will be. This、um, the dominant seventh chord of C major. So the next we have is the diminished seventh chord. Now, some people find it a little bit tricky, but that's okay. All you really need to know about the diminished seventh chord is that it builds up on minor triads. So we have a look at C major again. We count from C to get to a minor triad to create a minor triad. Go C, and I count to D. 
um, sorry, to C sharp, D, and an E flat, because a minor third contains three semitones. That's how you count up to a minor third. That's your next note. No after that will be G flat because we count from F. Um, no, sorry, E, F, and then G flat. And that's how you get another minor triad. And then lastly, we go G, A flat, and then you get A. And that is how you create the diminished seventh chord of C major. You can also say B double flat. B, I, is, I think it's okay to say um, just A if that's to your preference. But yeah, that's exactly how it works. That is all your chords. So then we can start moving into um, the dominant and diminished arpeggios. And that can be found actually in the A and e, B grade 7. Um, so let's look at uh, uh, two examples here. Let's look at the A flat dominant 7th in the root position arpeggio. So to get started on this arpeggio, we need to first find the dominant of A flat major, the 5th no, and that will be E flat. And then we go to G, we go to B flat, D, and we return to E again, and then exactly the way back down. The fingering for the scale will be for the first note, E flat, it will be number two on your right hand part, because we are actually working from the treble clef line. First finger on G, second finger on B flat, third on D flat, and fourth on B flat. And then repeat back down. Third on D flat, second on B flat, first on G, and then second on E flat. So just a reminder that with this arpeggio, we're only dealing with one octave. However, if you do wish to shift into the second octave, what you really need to do is once your fourth finger lands on E flat, you shift the entirety of the thumb to G and just continue from there with the same fingering. Second finger on B flat, third finger on D flat, so on and so forth. So the next scale we're moving on to is diminished seventh of A flat in the reposition arpeggio. So we're gonna start off with the seventh note of A flat, which is G. So we'll be starting on G with the arpeggio, and then we're moving into B flat, D flat, E, and G, and building on those minor triads. And we'll go back down the same way. E, D flat, B flat, and then G. So the fingering for this arpeggio will be first finger on G, second finger on B flat, third finger on D flat, fourth finger on E, and then your first finger return to G. And then same way going down, fourth finger on E, sec um, third finger on D flat, second finger on B flat, and first finger on G. And that is your diminished seventh arpeggio of A flat, only in the root position. And that is it for the video tutorial. If you have any more questions, please don't be afraid to ask. It's a little bit shorter than the other videos, but I'm happy to still answer questions and give you a bit more insight into how they work. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a good day.